some of you have asked me to find and read this lamp guy story. Well, I found it and I'm happy to read it because it's open source. I don't need to contact the original poster for permission. He gives permission right in the story. And it's wild. I cannot wait for you to hear it. But here's my favor. I got a request. If you've got any friends or family that are seeing Lamp Guy trending on TikTok two weeks ago or Instagram Reels this week, and they're like, who is this Lamp Guy? What's the deal with this? They don't get it. Send them this episode. I would appreciate it. All right. So check this out. My last semester at a certain college, I was assaulted by a football player for walking where he was trying to drive. Now, he was 325 pounds, and I was more like 120. While unconscious on the ground, I lived a different life. I met a wonderful young lady. She made my heart skip and my face red. I pursued her for months and dispatched a few jerk boyfriends before I finally won her over. After two years, we got married and almost immediately, we had a daughter. I had a great job and my wife didn't have to work outside of the house. When my daughter was two, my wife and I had a son. My son was the joy of my life. I would walk into his room every morning before I left for work and doted on him and my daughter. One day, while sitting on the couch, I noticed that the perspective of the lamp was odd, like it was inverted. It was still in 3D, but it just looked wrong. And by the way, it's a square lamp base. It's red with gold trim on four legs and a white square shade. I was transfixed, and I couldn't look away from it. I stayed up all night staring at it. The next morning, I didn't go to work. Something was just not right about that lamp. I stopped eating. I left the couch only to use the bathroom at first, and soon I stopped that too as I wasn't even eating or drinking. I stared at that lamp for three days before my wife got really worried. She had someone come try to talk to me. By this time, my cognizance was breaking up and my wife was freaking out. She took the kids to her mother's house just before I had my epiphany. The lamp is not real. The house isn't real. My wife, my kids, none of that is real. The last 10 years of my life didn't actually happen. The lamp started to grow wider and deeper. It was still in inverted dimensions. It took up my entire perspective and all I could see was red. I heard voices, screams, all kinds of weird noises and I became aware of pain and a lot of it. The first words I said were, I'm missing teeth, and then I opened my eyes. I was laying back on the sidewalk, surrounded by people that I didn't know. Everyone was freaking out, and I was completely confused. At some point, a cop scooped me up and kind of dragged and walked me across the sidewalk and grass and threw me face down in the back of a cop car. I was still confused. I was taken to the hospital by this cop, seems that he didn't want to wait for the ambulance to arrive, and given CT scans and you name it. I went through about three years of horrid depression. I was grieving the loss of my wife and children and dealing with the knowledge that they never even existed. I was scared that I was going insane as I would cry myself to sleep, hoping to see her in my dreams again. I never have, but sometimes I see my son. Usually just a glimpse out of my peripheral vision. He's perpetually five years old and I can never hear what he says. Long time casual lurker. I'm creeped out and I'm not quite sure what to do with myself. I had a friend over last night. We ran into each other earlier in the day and we made plans to have dinner together. She comes over and we hang out on the couch for around an hour, just chatting and whatnot. I stand up because I get a phone call so I go into my bedroom for around 10 or 15 minutes. I go back out and she's not there anymore. 
Okay, so she's in the bathroom, right? I sit on the couch to wait for her, but she doesn't come out. I go check on her. And the bathroom is empty. Now I'm weirded out. Did she just leave for no reason? I didn't hear the door open or close, and I have a pretty heavy door. I even go outside into the hallway to check if she was there for some reason, but she just promptly disappeared. So now I'm thinking she left for whatever reason, so I call her. It rings for a while and she picks up. Immediately, I think it's weird. If she did leave my flat, she should be on the street, but it's very quiet wherever she is, and she sounds like she just woke up. I ask her why she left my flat, and she had no idea what I was talking about. I get frustrated and ask where she is. I'm at home, taking a nap. Your phone call just woke me up. I could hear rustling sheets, and as I said, there's no way her side of the phone call would be so quiet if she just left my flat. I live in a busy area. I request to video call her, and there she is in her home, in her bed. She has no makeup on, she's in her jammies, looking confused, and her eyes are still kind of puffy from sleep. I ask her if she remembered coming to my flat, and she looks confused. Did we make plans today? She said that after running into me, all we did was chat, say goodbye, and then she went home to take a nap. Obviously, there's no way she got home, removed her makeup, undid her hair, and changed her clothes within 15 minutes, she lives like a half an hour away from me. I have no clue what happened or what to think of this. So this happened earlier this year, and I have literally no explanation for it or any idea how or why it happened. Me and my mom were talking about something and we went in for a hug. Our ears lined up perfectly with each other's and immediately, coming from inside her head, I heard what sounded like an internet dial-up sound, followed by the sound of an angelic choir of children singing two beautiful chords. It was very fast. The whole thing probably only lasted about five seconds. I was super shocked, so I pulled away expecting her to ask me what was wrong, but she pulled away at the same time, and we just looked at each other with the most shocked and confused expressions on our faces. She asked me, did you just hear that? I said yes, and then I asked what she heard. Well, you can imagine my surprise when she said that she heard the same internet dial-up sound followed by a bassy synth and percussion beat from the inside of my head. We've tried to recreate this many times since, but nothing like it has ever happened again. I have no idea what it was. I've tried to Google and see if anyone has experienced anything like this or has any explanation, but whenever I look it up, it just pulls up articles about schizophrenia. It sends my brain for such a loop whenever I think about it. Has anyone else ever heard of anything like this or have any explanation for it? I'm open to hearing anything. <laughs> I used to be upset when I thought my mom had eyes in the back of her head, but I think I'm glad she's never actually heard my thoughts before. I do dog boarding and dog sitting. I was driving to a client's house for the fourth time in two days. It's near my neighborhood, so the area isn't super unfamiliar. I'm not under the influence or tired. Their road is Portobello, and I know the house number. My GPS tells me to turn, so I do so, verifying the street sign. I begin looking for the wreath on their door that I had been using to identify their house but I don't see it. I turn around, roll down my window, and start looking at the house numbers. Theirs ends in 5-3. I see 4-9. I see 5-7. Wait, what? I think I missed the house. But they're all right next to each other, and I was looking carefully at the house signs. 
I turn around and drive by again. There's 57, there's 49, but no 53. Starting to get shaken, I look around. I see the distinct shrubbery of the house across the street that I'd noticed on my last visit as I was leaving. I drive back, nothing. There's no house number 53. I leave the neighborhood, I go back to the main street, turn around, and I drive back to Portobello. Driving down, I see 57, and then I see 53. It's right there, plain as day. I call my best friend as I enter the house to talk to me because I'm shaken. And she talks me through the 30-minute visit. As I'm leaving, a huge white wolf-looking dog is staring at me from the end of the walkway. My brain starts panicking, which I express to my friend. A guy comes into view and I see he has a leash and is walking the dog, just letting it wander pretty far into this yard. As I'm driving home, the owner sends me a text. She said that it showed on her ring camera when I left, but not when I arrived and she found this weird as that had never happened before. I entered and exited through the same front door. So, what the cinnamon toast frick is going on? I hope you're liking the story so far. If you are, click the subscribe button and leave a comment that says cinnamon toast F in the chat below. You can spell out the whole thing if you want to. I've just labeled this podcast as non-explicit and I'm going to commit to that, but you don't have to. Have fun. The time is 8.23 p.m. I was sitting in my living room, reading a book, and suddenly there's a large thud, and from nowhere, a family of four, wearing all black, walks across my hallway, opens the door to my storeroom, and goes inside. I was too shocked to do anything. I couldn't even process what I had just seen. My sister came rushing from her room noticeably concerned about the thud and I guess she sees me frozen. She asks me about the noise and I wasn't able to speak. I didn't know what to speak. I gathered enough courage to walk to the storeroom and open the door to find nothing. She comes to me and asks what the heck happened. I explained to her what I just saw and as expected, she laughed it off. I don't know what this was, but it was the most terrifying thing I've ever encountered. My wife was traveling over the weekend for a get-together out of state with her college friends. She left Saturday morning and came back Sunday night. Nothing was out of the ordinary. It was a normal weekend. It was about 9.45 p.m. that I hear the door open. My dog greeted her as he always does. I was in our office, which looks down the hallway. I see her come in and say hi, and she says, I have to pee so bad. And she goes to the bathroom and shuts the door. There was nothing unusual about that. Until 10 minutes later, I hear my dog excited at the door again. I look down the hallway and see my wife greeting my dog and she walks down the hallway and guess what she says? I have to pee so bad. And then she walks into the bathroom and shuts the door. There was nothing weird afterwards, I just simply cannot explain that. I know damn well she walked in the door 10 minutes earlier. Everything from the way my dog greeted her to the way she walked in, even to the way she spoke the cadence was the same. Everything was the same. It's like my brain hit the rewind button. This actually just happened. I was cleaning up my desk and I accidentally moved a few books to the side where I had put my glasses earlier. I thought to myself, oh shoot, when I noticed but it was already too late. My glasses fell to the right side of my desk and I even heard the noise of them falling to the floor. I got distracted for a second, but when I went to pick them up, they were gone. 
There were a few cables in that side of the desk, so at first, I thought they had just gotten stuck and I just couldn't see them. But I untangled all of the cables and there was still no trace of the glasses. I've looked everywhere, even found old items that had gotten stuck in small spaces near the desk, but the glasses are absolutely nowhere to be found. I checked in the weirdest places possible, including my shoes, because I don't know, man, what if? Right now, I'm just kind of anxious because I really, really need them, and I get headaches if I don't wear them for too long while at school. Maybe I'm just sleepy and need to get back at it tomorrow, or maybe I just put them somewhere else and don't remember. Either way, this is weird and I feel like I'm about to go crazy. I had just moved to the US when this happened. It was during the summer, a few years ago. My family was living in a farm in rural Florida as it was free housing provided by my dad's employer. The farm itself is nothing worthy of describing, aside from the fact that our little apartment was a 10 minute walk from the other rooms for the employees. Another employee had a daughter that would sometimes ask to play with us. I was 15 or 16 at the time, so I didn't feel inclined too often, but my sister is younger by two years, so they were closer in age and would go play with her to practice her English. One day, she went to play with her and left around 3 p.m. When the clock hit 5, my mother asked me to ring her phone as she didn't want her walking around alone that late. I agreed to call her and it went something like this. Hey, mom wants you to... Yeah, I'm on my way. Be there in 10 minutes. Okay, hurry. Yeah. And then hung up. Now, it was my sister. I know her voice like I know my own. So when she walked in 20 minutes later, I was like, I said, hurry. And she was like, yeah. And how did you do that, dumbass? And I told her I called her and about the rest of the call. She looked at me confused, but not overly. So probably thinking I was just trying to save myself from telling mom that I had lied about calling her and asking her to come back. Well, I left my phone charging here, so I don't know who you called. And then she pointed behind me. The phone had been there the entire time. I checked my call logs. I called her and she answered, but hers didn't show anything. It was her phone number in my call log. This is by far one of the freakiest things I've ever experienced. This person includes several edits that say, I never thought others would find this glitch interesting. I'm editing to add some details that I previously left in a comment. Those details include... The call was about 15 to 30 seconds, and the caller responded to my sister's name. The entire conversation was in Spanish. My sister and I seldom speak to each other in English. And this is another detail to keep in mind, as I mentioned it in another comment separate from this one. We have a distinct accent that resulted from our parents being from different regions. I know that it sounds coincidental, but this is one of the reasons that I can swear up and down it was her, which I neglected to mention at first. The dialogues that I included here aren't exactly what I said. I could hear the call clear as day. It wasn't muffled or staticky. And I don't know how else to describe it, but I can swear over hot fire that was my sister's voice. Another edit includes that the phones were the same model. They were the Samsung J7 Prime, as those were the phones we owned when we arrived in the US. We don't have them anymore and those phones were wiped clean before being sent to a family back in our home country. Now we own iPhones and there's no way of checking our current phones and I can't pinpoint an exact date to check with our phone provider. This was in late 2017. The submitter includes one final note that says, while I remember checking the call logs of her phone, I showed her this post today on December 5th of 2023 as it got some attention and we seem to remember something differently. It was six years ago after all, but while I remember the call not being on her phone, logged or otherwise, she says the call rung as missed while my phone logged it as a call. Needless to say, I'll keep my post as is because I remember it not being logged, but 
If you wish to take my sister's account of it being missed instead of ghost call, well, that's up to your discretion. I have no concrete way to prove either way wrong. The next story in this episode is voiced by a friend of mine that goes by Cryptic Tales. I hope you enjoy his narration and I encourage you to check out his channel. This story goes by the name of Snake Double. This happened several years ago, but I'll set the scene. I was visiting my parents and my brother lived with them. My brother was gifted a beautiful orange corn snake named Ozide. One day I hear this blood curling scream coming from my neighbor's house and I look outside to see what's going on. And what do I see? Ozide just vibing outside. My parents live in a duplex and Ozide was rarely out of her tank. So I go outside, look her over. Yup, that's her pick her up. At this point I'm super confused. So I holler up the stairs to my brother. Hey man, why the fuck is Ozade outside? Huh? She's not. Well not anymore, I just grabbed her. How the fuck did she get outside? No, seriously, she's not. She's right here. He walks up to the top of the stairs with Ozade in hand. They were completely identical beautiful corn snakes corn snakes are not wild i thought she must have been someone's pet who escaped i went around to all the neighbors and asked no one had a pet corn snake i posted something on craigslist and i posted flyers if she was someone's pet she was well taken care of just like ozide no one ever claimed her. Sad ending to that story is my cat got a hold of the second snake and punctured its skull. Several months later, it did not survive. Despite our best efforts, it still trips me every time I remember it. How did his snake double? How did the exact same corn snake just randomly appear in front of my parents? apartment. <laughs>